How'd you end up with the El Royale? The Ritz-Carlton was booked. This place used to be hustling and bustling. This is not a place for a priest, Father. You shouldn't be here. We might need to work on your sales pitch, son. <laughs> the El Royale, no place for a priest. It's rather rare that I read a script and it pops. It was fresh, it was unique, it was full of drama. The more you start scratching at the surface, the more you realize it's got a lot of secrets. When you've got the writer who's the director as well, you know, you've got the goods. This is where all those ideas came from. It started from a place of love, of ensemble movies. Everyone has a complicated backstory. No one is who they appear. It made it very easy to attract the cast that I wanted in this film. And it was fun to be able to say to them, no, no, we're going to do something different. I love movie theaters. There's a connection that is made that you can't replicate in your living room. Bad Times is aggressively trying to give the theater goer that experience. The El Royale sits on the border of California and Nevada, so it's half in both states. Both sides of the hotel have kind of unique personalities. There's layers upon layers upon layers hidden within the story. It's a wildly unpredictable, sinister thriller. A brutal love story between a bunch of strangers. I am blown away by the detail on the set. I mean, it was crazy. It's nothing like you've seen before. And the hotel is truly a character in the film itself. It calls people who are slightly lost into it. In a very violent sort of way. This is a special thing to be a part of. I've never seen anything like it before. I wanted to feel that feeling when you're sitting next to somebody in a theater and you both realize you don't know where this movie's gonna go. 